Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum Update Wednesday, October 23rd at midnight. Well, it's 1 a.m. if you're watching me now. 2019. The models are in in Europe. They're deep. Heads up. The Balkans will be buried. We'll get to that. The U.S. isn't out of the woods. Chivalu erupting to 36,000 feet. And there's global unrest. And Al Gore's laughing all the way to the fucking bank. Keep calm. It's boom time. PG&E releases a list of places in California where the power could go out on Wednesday. Well, thank God they list the, place, but the places. Alpine County, Amador, Butte, and so on and so forth. Half a million people could be affected. Links will be below if you're in that region. LA Times not allowing us to watch this because we've reached our free article limit, which is saying something. Don't pay for it. More California blackouts to avert wildfires may start Wednesday. Mm. Residents in 16 California counties have been warned that Wednesday may bring more intentional power shutoffs to over 200,000 customers, 500,000 from other venues. The announcement comes less than a month after utility company PG&E cut power for several days to nearly 800,000 customers. Liars. We actually saw 1.1 million at one point at Power Outage US. So we're going to be watching it closely because the powers that be do not watch it closely. But we do at the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, which is why people are pissed off and they hate us. Because when you provide facts... To people that have been living on dogma, well, it's anyone's guess how they'll feel. So far, the power has not been cut to California. Power outage U.S. has not been paid off by PG&E either. So tomorrow morning, we're going to get some really amazing data. And we're going to be sharing with you live as soon as the state lights up. Calif Texas is the schmexus of the nexus right now. 14,980 customers without power. That is a drop in the bucket. Normal power outages. Arkansas coming in number two, 6,782. PA, 5552. Who knew? You know now. Poweroutage.us.com. No, it's just .us. California wildfires threaten celebrity homes near affluent Pacific Palisades neighborhood. Thank God. Maybe it'll wake some of these rich pricks up. I doubt it. Weekend snow blankets, Colorado ski areas. Awesome. Totally stoked. In Frisco, the first storm on Friday was a bit of a teaser with mostly rain and sleet. But a much more powerful storm rolled in Sunday to bring several inches of snow in the town and all of Summit County ski resorts. Hours of powers. And more snow is coming. It's going to continue to come and come and come all over the place until they're buried in it. National Weather Service, snow possible for eastern South Dakota over Tuesday night. That's their plight. Rain and snow should develop late tonight and continue through early Wednesday afternoon. A dusting to a couple of inches of snow is possible. The better chance is near Highway 14 from Huron to Brookings to Pipestone. A mix of rain and snow is likely on I-90, which will totally fluxate that situation. I hate it when I'm fluxed. Taste of early winter spreads across Canada by Halloween, early November. Now, they've already had their Thanksgiving, in case you didn't pick up what we put down there. Tuesday, October 22nd, the final days of October will signal more widespread chilly patterns with colder than normal temperatures expected in the prairies in Atlantic Canada. After Al Gore promised porpoises to be ejecting flames right out of their... Yes, it's not true. It's going to be cold. Minus six in Yellowknife, minus three in Edmonton, minus five in Churchill. That's your forecast. That was Monday. Holy shit. Anyway, what am I even reading? Let's check out the actual models that I loaded. Take a look. By Thursday, whew, snow is going to move all the way to Texas. The nexus of the Schmexus will be seeing its first snow. Mid-fall, and the records may fall. 
up to seven inches predicted in some areas of North Texas. Northern New Max, where we're headed. This is the region we're headed in. Happily, it's in the clear. But we'll be heading there out to the Tewa people during this little lull here. But the snow's coming, folks. It's coming, and it's going to be a bumming. Because once the Canadian Shield is covered, it's cold down here. Picking it up. It's going to be cold. UK forecast. Heavy snow for the Balkans. So the UK is going to pick up its first lick of snow through the weekend. Here's through your Saturday. Boom! And we're talking up to 13 centimeters in some regions. 13 to 18. And then maybe uh, that's it for most of the UK. Northern UK will pick up some snow in the beginning of November. But look at these totals out here in Siberia. <laughs> Now we're talking Western Russia, the Balkans, and all of Eastern Europe really picking up some heavy numbers. The Alps are going to be really left out here with just normal snowfall. Seismic update. No quakes of note except this little tippy touch up here, 4.6, northeast of Pont Inlet in Canada. And we've had a cacophony of quakes uh, in the Indonesia region, which is releasing pressure. So no major quakes expected there, except we do have a 24 to 48 hour window of increased seismicity coming soon. As soon as the equatorial coronal hole couples with us, we're watching it. Volcano forms giant bubbles, large enough to swallow an entire ship. Now, if you heard of tales of your where ships go missing. The date is in, folks. And these bubbles can reach 1,500 feet wide, which would swallow a 180-foot clipper ship in a second, like a burp, and drop it down 1,000 feet into the sea, and it'd be gone forever. Amazing paper coming out. The research published in the journal Nature Geoscience may help bring, and we could just right-click on this and open the link, if you don't know how to do that, may help bring this story from fiction to science fact. Such large bubbles may explain the sudden disappearance of ships at sea. In September 1952, the Kayo Muda 5 was sent into Japanese Devil Sea for investigating unexplained ship losses, and the ship was lost. <laughs> now, according to the recorded data, the bubbles are surprisingly large, reaching 500 meters, more than 1,600 feet in diameter. The bubbles form when the incandescent lava meets the colder water of the Bering Sea. The molten rock instantly solidifies and a thin elastic film of glass forms. As the pressure from the volcanic vent increases, volcanic gases like carbon dioxide, which is a pollutant, and sulfur dioxide, which is not, which actually is a pollutant, fill and expand the bubble. The bubble grows until suddenly collapses under the weight of the water and ships get sucked in. Like they're in a vortex. Like the Bermuda Triangle, yo. That's what's happening there, by the way. Info sound from giant bubbles during an explosive submarine eruptions. There's your paper. Not a schmaper. Read it in depth. You can understand this one. There's no math. Chivalouche erupting to 36,000. We're getting a report on residuals. Oh, shit. I love the residuals. We're always trying to pick up on those. Explosive activity continues. Volcanic ash advisory center Anchorage warned a volcanic ash plume that rose up to 36,000 feet earlier today is still getting them jiggy. Holy twiggy. There I am. Let me get me in there. Holy shit. How's that? Laguna Jayu Kota Volcano News and Activity Updates. Have you ever heard of such a word? Now the Laguna Jayu Kota Volcano Volcanic Ash Advisory from the Sigmet Report is showing potential eruption here at the Mar. The Mar Volcano. Not to be confused with Mars. But here we are at the Smithsonian Institutional Global Volcanism Program. 
where we can see the data. Two small, youthful-looking Mars located in the central Altiplano of Bolivar, north of Salar de Uña, and the east of the Salar de Colapsa. Laguna Jayu Cota, initially considered to be a meteorite impact crater, was formed by a basaltic Trachean dacite explosive volcanism. Niki Cota Mar lies four kilometers southwest of Julia Cota, both considered by Silva and Francis in 91 to be of probable Holocene age and their awakening, baby. These are phreatomagmatic lake eruptions, which means it blows a lake into the in sky. Yes, these are Mars and phreatic eruptions. If you want to know more about them, they'll be linked below. It's a geologic phenomenon that is unlike anything you've ever seen. A Mars is a volcanic crater that forms when magma contacts groundwater. So it doesn't have to be a lake. It could be a shallow caldera that is right at the level of groundwater, and it's still all of the magma is super saturated in water, which is where we can get precious metals and amazing quartz crystals like are found in Hot Springs, Arkansas, and other strange things like, anyway, trachea day sites. And these steam eruptions are called phreatic eruptions, which are especially dangerous because in this steam cloud are microcrystalline glass fibers, which we learned about earlier with the uh, Hawaii volcano and the Lays haze. Yes, you don't want to breathe the Lays because you'll it's just like puffing that bad cannabis tincture, whatever they're vaping. <laughs> Same shit, different name. Now, the Unarek Mar views of the Unarek Mar crater formed in 1977 is one of the best examples of these Mar eruptions. Now, what is a Mar? A Mar is a shallow volcanic crater with steep sides surrounded by tephra deposits. Now, a tephra is this stuff, these layers, the tephra. Yes, and those are like a conglomerate's version of sedimentary rock, the conglomeratic version of volcanic explosion. The tephra deposits are thickest near the crater and decrease with distance from the crater. Hello? That's based on the volcanic output of the explosion in the phreatic eruption. A Mars is formed by one or more underground explosions that occur when hot magma comes into contact with shallow groundwater that produces a violent steam explosion, similar to the one that will happen at Yellowstone, not in your lifetime, but 670 million thousand years ago. The last one. Sorry. I digress. So that's what Amar is. It has nothing to do with Bill, that liberal, sh fat, rich schmuck who knows nothing about science, by the way. But he has a big nose, though. Solar storms expected to be more, more damaging, according to scientists. Yes, we've been telling you this all along, and now the mainstream is picking up on it, thankfully. According to research, the consequences of a Carrington-type solar storm would be far more damaging nowadays. That's because of the magnetosphere waning and the magnetic reversal ongoing. Hello. Given that the Earth could expect a flare storm more often, and we are in a 50 to 70 year deficit of a Carrington type event. So, that 1998 Canadian thing was nothing compared to what we're in a deficit for, which is coming soon to a planet near you and a grid that you rely on. So if you don't have backup power and if you don't have backup food and you are you think you're going to survive and thrive in the next decade, you are completely lost. You do not know what's happening with the infrastructure and your life and the world and the powers that be are not going to be there to save you. They will be there to tell you that there's going to be no one coming for three months. Then what will you do? How many candles do you have? <laughs> Not enough. Do you have backup generators? Your food's going to go bad. You'll have to eat it all at once. Do you know how to cook it? Do you know how to wild craft, wild harvest? Do you have chickens? Do you have eggs? Do you know how to farm? I doubt it. How many canned goods do you have? Do you have enough rice and beans for four months? It only costs like 50 bucks. Do it! Anyway, I can't warn you enough, but we still have 23 tabs open. The worst day in Earth's history contains an ominous warning. And the warning is that Fear mongers 
abound. The only way to get funding from uh, these foundations when you're in grad school is to scare the shit out of people. Not only that, to use fake science and manipulated data to warm the shit out of the planet (laughs) or acidify the ocean, which is total bullshit because I'm about to stick my foot right up the ocean acidification nonsense. Oceans can never get acidic. They can never fall below pH 7. They're basic. Oceans are basic. And this has been proven since 19, the 70s. My goodness. I'm a stratigrapher, a sedimentologist. I know about sedimentary geology and the data involved in precipitation of aragonite and calcium carbonate. I'm a limestone geologist, an invertebrate paleontologist. That's a lot of words. But that's what I am at at heart. That's what I I know and I breathe. And the fact that these people have been calling ocean acidification as an actual thing is a lie because the oceans can never become acidic, ever. And so it's moving in the acidic direction in the pH scale, maybe, but it'll never become acidic and we're going to break it down for you. But here... The Atlantic, which is a liberal rag, apparently, gloms on to the global warming nonsense, and they want to tell you that the ocean is going to be acidified. A new paper published this week in the Proceedings of Blippity Bloppity Blue offers an answer. The answer is that it's your fault. We should be worried. Study confirms fear that intense ocean acidification portends ecological collapse. These schmucks learned no geology or science or investigate. They have no investigative. Anyway, moxie is the word I was going to use, but they can't even Google that word. So here we get common dreams, which are co- should be called common frauds. Because they can't even do any journalism, which involves actual research. Hello. Not just glomming on to all the talking pieces that the mainstream puts out so that you get views on common dreams. Hey, common dreams. Common that. Right up your... Because I'm sick of this bullshit. 85% of everything you read is not journalistic. It's bullshitistic. It's regurgitation of the same talking points that the policymakers invented to make you retarded and make you listen to what they say so you go to work at your shit job 50 hours a week to barely pay your bills and that you don't have any time to even take a vacation and most people don't even use that time because they're so indoctrinated that they want to be a slave. Do you want to be a slave? I doubt it. The majority of you are trying to find a way out. Well, there is a way out. It's called walk away. How much more is having nothing than what you have right now? Probably very similar. Are you picking it up? Let me just put it this way. Eight years ago, I was homeless living on the side of a river. The feds were after me because I grew cannabis, right? This is nine years ago. Maybe even a a decade, but it doesn't matter. The point is that you can come back. You can decide not to comply. You can decide to do your own thing. And for that person that commented in the video when we were out there at Penitente Canyon that we're claiming that we're over here at Oppenheimer Ranch trying to be carbon neutral or carbon zero, and you could go suck it. You don't have no idea what we're doing here. Sustainability has nothing to do with carbon zero. The human body is a carbon-making machine. We exhale carbon dioxide every breath. We're made of carbon. You're an idiot. Second of all, we love burning wood. We want to produce as much carbon dioxide as possible on this ranch because it's plant food and we grow plants. So we burn everything that's not toxic. We 
encourage cutting down forests and burning wood and replanting trees and being sustainable at agriculture and forestry. We encourage cutting down old growth forests because they're choking out the understory, which includes biodiversity, berries, trees, and nuts, and allows for uh, the microbiome to flourish. You need these forests to burn. We haven't burned forests for hundreds of years. We've had forest fire suppression. We need to cut down these forests and replant new ones. They grow back. That is sustainability. We need to grow permaculture farms because once you plant them, they grow back and you don't have to do shit except harvest. And you build the soil the whole time. Chop and drop, folks. It's not about carbon neutral. It's about increasing your carbon footprint in a positive way. The more carbon dioxide you make, the greener the earth will get. Do not believe the hype. Do not pay taxes for carbon. Do not buy carbon credits. It's a scam to sell on the commodities market carbon credits. It's so the IPCC and Al Gore can make billions of dollars trading carbon credits on the commodities market that are worth nothing. It's a fraud. CO2 is plant food. It's not pollution. Anyone who believes CO2 is pollution has been indoctrinated by idiots called globalists. And you're going to regret your whole life. Trust me. Please shake that out of your head. Carbon dioxide is plant food. It's good for the earth. Carbon credits are stupid. They're made by globalists that want you to get a barcode in your wrist and a chip in your head and every other dumb shit. You're going to move to a smart city if you believe in carbon credits, and it's your fault. It will be your fault. This whole global warming ruse, if you buy into it, and the taxation involved will be your fault because you fell for it. Are you picking it up? Because I'm sick of putting it down. It's been two fucking years, and only 50,000 people have subscribed to this channel. I thought it would be way above that. I'm really disappointed. So now, the study confirms the fear of ocean acidification. No, it doesn't. Here's the total myth of ocean acidification broken down. <coughs> Bear with me. Because I'm pissed, and this is science, and we're going to break it down live. Put on your, get into your uh, school seat, take out your notebooks, because we're going to class. And you can kiss my ass. When it comes to debunking gorable warning. <laughs> gorable warming. Yes. And here's puppet number one. The dumbest human on earth. He's just pretty so he doesn't have to read any books. He just combs his hair. Leonardo de Schmuckrio. And he gets applause from the biggest fat schmuck. Look how wide this schmuck is. Twice as wide as de Carprio, De Schmuckrio. And, and he's saying, yes, Al Gore, you are a leader and, a, and a, you're a hero in the movement for global sh douchebaggery. I am so stupid and compliant. I will suck your schminus right now because I'm a gleanus of the penis of schminus. Because I'm DiCaprio Schmaprio. I'm the most overpaid retard ever, but I'm pretty. I'm, aren't I pretty? Wouldn't you love to have me as your partner? Hey, DiCaprio, you might be pretty, but you're dumb as a tree and you could suck it. And, and you got Gore here clapping you on like his puppet because he wants you to suck it too. He wants you to suck right onto him so he can make a billion dollars on fake GMO meat that you're like saying, yes, yes, all the rich retards that, that love me need to eat your fake GMO meat and get sick and die early and take all those pharmaceuticals that they, that are carcinogenic, you know, for heart disease and all that other stuff. And then you're going to actually pay millions of dollars to inject uh, carcinogenic Carcinogenic things when I have cancer to cure me. You're going to make me sicker to cure me when all I need to do is fucking get some cannabis oil. But I'll never tell you about that because I'm Leonardo de Awesome Rio. Yes. Listen to me. Now, way back in the Pleistocene, Marine Science One, our professor Robert Wadusky signed the oceans and the blah, blah, blah. 
The notion that CO2 partial pressure influences the pH of seawater isn't a new concept. But if you go back into the book that I studied at university, yes, Stratigraphy and Sedimentation, Springer, Semester, 1979. Principles of Sedimentology by Friedman. I'm well versed in this book. I had several copies. There's an entire section on the relationship of CO2 and pH and how it affects the world. Now, what you're going to just break down, I'm going to, for layman, just come to this graph. This is all geologic history. These yellow zones are the acidification zones, which have happened in the past. And I can assure you they have because CO2 in parts per million has been as high as 5,500. We're barely at 450 and they want you to be worried about 450, but we've been at 5,500. Here's 4,000 in the late Devonian. This is when all the bony fishes were miraculously evolved at 4,500 parts per million CO2. 4,000. In the Permian, we had an explosion of biodiversity at 3,000 parts per million. Almost 10 times the current level. Nothing died. In fact, biodiversity exploded. Exploded. When CO2 was 10 times current levels, it exploded. Like, boom. Did I say that? Like, boom. It exploded. And then again, it exploded in the Triassic as it rose above 1,700 parts per million. Another explosion. Above 2,000, a Jurassic explosion where dinosaurs could literally eat you in one bite. Ah! I saw that movie. So, the rise in CO2 causes an explosion in diversity, biodiversity and evolution. And now we're going up, up, and up where we're going to evolve and there's going to be an explosion in biodiversity before the mass extinction event, which is the micronova. So all of these dots are carbon dioxide highs, which are also associated with mass extinctions, which have nothing to do with the rise. <coughs> the mass extinction occurs because of the fall. These dots are located on the major fall-offs. Dot extinction. Dot extinction, dot extinction, dot extinction, dot extinction, dot extinction, dot extinction. Do you get it? I can't make it any clearer. Carbon dioxide through geologic time. Get the facts. Links below. Weather modification. Yes, we believe in weather modification. It's widespread. It's a waste of billions of dollars, and it does not include chemtrails. Commercial airline pilots are not spraying poison on you. That is persistent condensation of clouds behind planes called contrails. Persistent contrails have been noted starting in 2002 reached a maximum in 2007 and 9, and I'm now re-peaking in a maximum. Just like the cosmic ray maximum. Cosmic rays nucleate clouds. But let's talk about real weather modification. For you people that I've had to block, that are still watching, we still love you. But you're maniacs. The 4 million flights a day that are forming persistent contrails behind commercial jets have nothing to do with weather modification. Nothing! And that's all I'll say on that. If you want to know about the facts of weather modification, we have an entire list of all the places in the world where geoengineering is occurring right now. Argentina, Antigua, Australia, Burkina Faso, Canada, Greece, India, Indonesia, and these are click on links. You can click on them and find out what type of geoengineering is happening in all of these countries. It is public information, you schmucks. Mexico, Mali, Morocco, Saudi Arabia. Look at the United States. These are all geoengineering 
procedures, products. Look at that. There are two dozen geoengineering products happening right now in the U.S. It's happening before your very lives. None of them involve commercial airlines. And if you still think commercial airlines are doing a convert spraying, how about you talk about these 54 fucking people that are geoengineering? How about you idiots that are taking pictures of commercial airlines actually research geoengineering? You fucking idiots. How about you stop talking about nothing and actually talk about something? You know what science is? It is actually the research and documentation of facts and evidence based on experimentation. Yes. Looking at planes and taking pictures while you watch Oprah from your fat ass couch eating Doritos does not, no, that that does not entail any scientific investigation. First, you have to do the research on geoengineering. I've left you links to 54 actual geoengineering products in the U.S. Will you even look at them? No. You'll continue to eat your Doritos, take your diabetic medications and your heart fat ass medications that give you cancer because you're on insurance and you'll continue to go outside and take pictures of trails coming out of planes and be like, camp trails, camp trails. And that is the state of the union. New gene editing technology could correct 89% of genetic defects, scientists say. But they have 99.9% .9 no information on the after effects, Diamond says. There has been no studies on this gene editing technique, except that it works. And we're going to use it. The precautionary principle has gone out the window starting with Monsanto and genetic modification, and it is unheard of. There is no such thing as the precautionary principle in science. Once we learn how to make aliens, we will make them by the billions if you will buy them. We don't give a fuck if the earth will die in 10 years. We need to make money. Joe Biden said in 1998 that Clinton impeachment could be seen as a partisan lynching. But no one ever said lynching ever before that was a president except Donald Trump. That's how disingenuous we are. We are the media. We are totally full of shit. And at any moment, we'll say whatever the fuck we want to get what we want. Thank you. We are the media. Bought and paid for by the multinational corporations that own us. You want to hear fake news? Watch the news, you dumb fucks. Hubble Images Galactic Visitor, Interstellar Galactic Visitor, Comet 2I Borisov. There she is. She's gorgeous. It's called an electric comet. You can see an ion tail to the right and another one up here. Both electrical. Has nothing to do with ice or ancient blah, 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 blah. blah. Now, someone sent me this video that's free coming out from Vimeo. It's a two-hour video on ClimateGate. It's supposed to support our position. I haven't had a second to watch it. Actually, I did. I watched the first three minutes, and I think it sucks based on those first three minutes. They just put a bunch of fucking scientific pictures together with no explanation as if to amaze you, but I haven't got to the meat of it. So my first impression on the first three minutes is this is going to suck and be way too long. But someone sent it to me that's a viewer, so it's on them, not me. I did not recommend that. Spotify is giving premium subscribers a free global home mini spyware device that the CIA will listen to every fucking word your family says for free. Can you believe that? This is what uh, the CIA was using just two decades ago as top secret. Now it costs a penny to make in China, and they're supplying it, the CIA, to everyone that buys Spotify to put into their homes so they can listen to you 24-7. Isn't that awesome? I hope you get it, and you're that dumb. Astronomers discover Cosmic Yeti, galaxy from the early universe. 
Well, there is no early universe because the universe is infinite and has been here forever. So to say early means you're an idiot. And to use the word Yeti, which means a fake animal from Earth that's white called the abominable snowman, makes you even more... Anyway, how is... What's going on? Oh my God, let's talk about Tewa. And what you're looking at here is the beautiful butterfly pattern hair worn by the Tewa people. About to spend a three-day trip out in the Tewa province. Now, the Tewa people are one of the 50,000 indigenous tribes that were murdered by the white man. The scumbags that claim that they discovered America <laughs> when all they did was steal it from the people that owned it. The Tewa people, right here. Look at this gorgeous young girl. <clears throat> probably raped and murdered by white people. And now if you look at some of the hidden indigenous Tewa dances and cultural practices, uh, some of the research I have done took me back to this picture, back before they were disallowed from continuing to do these practices. The U.S. government disallowed all Native Americans from maintaining their Native cultural dances and the information that was passed down time immemorial so that we would lose that information. It's part of the original plan, starting from the burning of the uh, original library in Alexandria. That was the beginning of the disinformation. The library of Alexandria contained all of the ancient esoteric knowledge. And as they began to burn that, it, that led into the Dark Age where they burned all the books they rewrit all the history. They eliminated the entire time from about 400 AD to about 1600 AD. Completely eliminated. And the Tewa people remembered it because they weren't polluted until recently. And, and some of these indigenous dances are very reminiscent of the Dogon tribe in Western Africa. With the same patterns, the same dances... And these double, these eye patterns is the toroid effect, which is a plasma discharge effect. And this is the Jacob's ladder or the feather that we found in Utah. All the same thing they're depicting here. And we're going to uncover more of these mysteries. Here is some Tewa pottery culture uh, art. And you can clearly see here that this is Venus as a comet changing direction as it moves. And you can hear, probably see a cloud and hear the stars up in the heavens. Just amazing how much we could have learned if we weren't, weren't polluted by assholes like Al Gore or DiCaprio, both schmucks, which have no business talking about science or facts or anything because they're so fucking out of touch with the rest of us 8 billion people. And, and yet... The sheep, 80% of the 8 billion, worship these fucking retards. I can't even gather how retarded our culture has become. They're laughing at you. These people get their assholes waxed, their toenails cut every day. People make them food. Al Gore's electric bill is $32,000 a month. That's more than you fucking ever make a year. Isn't that crazy? Hope you got something out of the video. I'm sick of these pricks controlling the narrative. I wish more of you people had the balls to share this with your loved ones. I wish more of the loved ones that give me thumbs down and don't want to hear what I have to say actually pop their head out of their ass and listen for the first time in their very lives. These rich oligarchs are laughing all the way to the bank at your expense. They don't give a fuck about you. I do. We love you.